Hello, Internet, and welcome to this week's edition of One Minute News from One Minute Economics, an edition that's going to be dedicated to Turkey and more specifically to the relationship between Turkey and NATO. I'm doing this because, as some of you might know, Turkey has recently signed an arms deal with Russia totaling about $2.5 billion, which, of course, is not a huge amount given the magnitude of the players involved. But when you have the second largest military in terms of personnel of NATO, which is Turkey, with the United States being on position number one, signing a deal with Russia of all countries, then it's time to ask ourselves questions. And today we're going to do just that by one, dedicating a minute to analyzing the relatively recent history of Turkey. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk about the Ottoman Empire. I'm going to talk about the 20th century century. Number two, I'm going to dedicate another minute to analyzing the present. And finally, number three, I'm going to draw some conclusions. Let's start with the beginning of the 20th century when modern day Turkey emerged as an interesting ally for the Western world, especially since its first ever president, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, had a vision for the country and his vision was enforced through all sorts of means, including military coup d'etats later on, a vision that included things like the separation between religion and state. So all in all, in 1952, the strategic decision was made to let Turkey, together with Greece, become a member of NATO. And it did seem that the country was progressing in a pro-Western manner, in that when it comes to the major urban regions of Turkey, Western values became embraced more and more, Turkey became a very tourist-friendly uh, destination and things like that. So from that perspective, everything seemed to be fine and dandy, and people thought Turkey was on the right path. What they failed to realize, however, was that not enough attention was given to the rural areas of Turkey, where, just like in rural areas elsewhere in the world, not people tend to be more conservative. And a lot of frustrations originated from there. And to put it simple, people felt unrepresented. They were not happy with the way in which Turkey was run. They didn't have faith in the path the country was on. They weren't all that thrilled with their standard of living. And this created a tricky situation for Turkey. And that on the one hand, you had, let's say, educated young people who wanted a pro-Western trajectory. And on the other hand, he had the conservative portion of the population that wanted the exact opposite. Let's talk about events closer to the present and move on to the year of 2002, when the party of the now famous leader Recep Tayyip Erdogan won the elections. And of course, in 2003, Erdogan became the prime minister of Turkey. And he has managed to uh, ascend to power thanks to a significant degree to support from the traditionalist voter base. And he kept that in mind. He kept the interest of those people in mind. He's a great politician, a good manipulator, and as such, has managed to win over the loyalty of the population in question. Because again, as a cunning manipulator, he knew precisely when to play around with the release valves of Turkey society and say, okay, let's move a bit more towards fundamentalism now, then a bit more later on. And before you know it, we end up in the present and ask ourselves just what's likely to happen with Turkey, just which side is it on? Because on the one hand, it's a core NATO member and a member of huge, huge, huge geostrategic importance. But on the other hand, it's starting more and more to embrace values that are not exactly aligned with what Atatürk would have envisioned on the one hand and fundamentally with what the European Union or the United States have in mind. So from this perspective, politically speaking, Turkey is playing an extremely dangerous game and their decision of signing an arms deal with Russia, again, of all countries, should speak for itself. Erdogan is willing to play hardball. And for this reason, I, for one, consider Turkey the weakest link in NATO. 
It's now time for today's conclusions and in my opinion, the number one question we need to be asking ourselves is just what is at stake? And I for one believe the answer is simple. One term, NATO. Because let's be honest, NATO has been under tremendous attack from all directions recently. Because one, you had politicians from NATO member states, most notably Trump during the election campaign, who openly questioned the relevance of NATO and all sorts of other aspects related to this organization. Two, you have decisions such as what the European Union is planning on doing with its intention of moving towards having its own army. Three, you have dangerous developments in several important NATO member states, like, of course, Turkey, about which we've talked today, but there's also Hungary, let's not even talk about Greece, for example, and the complicated situation over there. So, yeah, all of these attacks have shook NATO to its core, and we do have to ask ourselves, what would happen if the organization were to be put to the supreme test, and the supreme test for NATO is Article 5, which says that should one member state be attacked, everyone else has to help. So, for example, what if Russia would attack or destabilize one of the Baltic countries? What would Turkey do in that case? What about Hungary? What about Greece? It's a tricky scenario for sure, and I think that the time to seek clarity is right now, is the present. And if all parties involved don't come together and reach some kind of a coherent consensus, then I, for one, believe that we're going to be heading towards military isolationism as well, and the consequences are pretty hard to imagine. That's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in to yet another edition of One Minute News from One Minute Economics. And as always, please like my videos, comment, and subscribe to One Minute Economics if you haven't by now. Of course, don't forget that my book launch is just around the corner and I really need your help. So please give me one minute of your time by heading over to oneminuteeconomics.com and reading my message, which clearly states what you can do to help right now before the launch, what you can do after the launch, and stuff like that. One minute of your time, that's all I'm asking for. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a great day.